and one more second. Cool. All right. So yeah, just let's just go through some of the, the methods. So if we have, do I have any numbers here? Let's say we have like a list of revenues. Okay, just some things to take note of is, you know, I know that you all know, right, like how to append to a list, all right? Uh, so let's add another revenue. In general, like if we're adding stuff to a list, you could see I almost typed foo. Like why is this bad? It's even if we're working with fake data, I don't like the data being of different types if we're working with a list, all right? Like all of our data, as we mentioned, right, it should be the same kind of element at a bare minimum. That means it should be the same type, right? This is a string and these are integers. So in, in fact, in a lot of languages, not in Python, but in a lot of languages, they will enforce that all elements are of the same data type. Generally, that's a good practice. So we can have, you know, let's say it's just like 50,000. You can put an underscore here. Uh, it's like a comma uh, and it doesn't, it will stay an integer. It's just for visual purposes. So what did I want to show here? I wanted to show that this obviously did something, right? Like if we look at revenues now, it added a new element to the end of the list. But what I want you to just take note of is you don't see anything below here, right? When I did revenues.append 50,000, there's no output below. And like kind of the technical term of that is like, is that the return value of append is none. So in Python, this happens pretty often where methods that change the data, right? This is altering, taking a list that originally was two elements and it's now updating it so that it's three. They, that if the method changes the data, oftentimes it will not return a value. So the reason why this is kind of important is one, you know, this is doing something even if it doesn't look like it. And two, let's say we do something like this. So we have revenues, right? It has three elements in the list. And now let's do revenues.append, you know, let, let's say 100,000. And let's say I wanna assign this, let's call this my new revenues. Right, so I'm gonna press shift return here. Give myself some new spaces. And now let's look at new revenues. And what is new revenues? New revenues is none, right? You can see that this is, this is not a list that now has 100,000 in it, right? This is none. So what's going on? What's going on is revenues did get updated, right? Revenues now has our 50,000 in it, and it also has our 100,000 in it. But the, what do we assign new revenues to equal? We assign new revenues to equal the return value of appending 100,000. And the return value of append, right, the output that we see is none. So we assign new revenues to equal none, right? So I show this because it's bug prone, right? Like this is a, a common way to like make, you know, to cause a bug. And also because it means that we really not only want to pay attention to what does the method do, but what does it return, okay? So let's take a look at another method. Uh, so we, right, new revenues is none, I believe. Let's take a look at revenues again. Now let's say we wanna re remove the last element, so we use pop. This alters the list, right? It, re it alters this list. So you might expect that given the rule I just said, it doesn't return a value, but it does. Re re this method pop really does two things. One, it removes the element from the list, and two, it returns that last element. Okay, so it is, like I said, if you were to assign this, if you were to like, uh, let's just call it new value for now, and do dot pop, right? Uh, you want to make sure you know what the return value is, right? It's not a list with only two elements in it now, but it's rather it's going to be that last element from the list, okay? Cool. And again, notice I, even though I'm using kind of these dummy variables, I'm still keeping that pattern of this is singular because there's only one value here. Revenues is a list, therefore, you know, it's plural. All right. One other thing about pop is let's uh, 
Let's create a list again. Just add some values here. With pop, you can also, um, you don't always have to just remove the last element. So one other thing you can do, by the way, notice this, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I just have my cursor in the middle of the arguments here, and this is now giving me some documentation, okay? So it tells me, like, remove and return the item at, at an index. So that's kind of interesting. Default last. And then you can see here it puts in the negative one. It says index equals negative one, which remember we said negative one is for the last index. It's always the last element in the list. So what this means probably is like if we say pop, right, it says remove an element. Can I look at it again? It's, sometimes it's hard for it to come up. But it says remove an element at an index. So what if I want to remove this element instead? Zero, one. Now we should see this number right and here we have this guy okay so it removed this element returned it and now we have these two so pop takes you know an optional argument or another way of putting it is it has a default argument of zero meaning if we do not provide anything the index that assumes you want is zero but you can override that by providing an index here okay and then the other thing we saw was, sometimes it's hard for me to have this come up. Uh, if you have your cursor in the middle, you can see the documentation. I believe another way you can do this, see, is with, uh, you can't do it. Can I do this? Ah, uh, there we go. Another way you can see the documentation is, notice I removed the parentheses here, okay? And I put these two question marks in front and then I press shift return, and now you can get the documentation, okay? Raise this is an index error if the list is empty, right? If there's nothing in the list, how can I remove something? Or if the index is out of range, meaning like we say remove the 10th element, but there's only five elements. Isn't the assumed, you are correct, Chinmay. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, so Chinmay said, you know, what I did was I said the default was Zero, that's wrong. That would be removing the first element from the list. The default is negative one. Thanks for that. Cool. Okay, one other thing I should point out here. Okay, so we just showed, you know, we can see the documentation by like of a method by doing this revenues, right? So we're working with a list. We say dot pop. We have this double question mark, and we are not putting the parentheses here just for the purpose of seeing the documentation. Okay, and that shows up. If, in general, though, when you want to like call a method, uh, like append parentheses, pop parentheses, if you forget to put the parentheses, and I don't have those like two question marks, can I close this? Uh, there we go. Notice what it does. This is like, if you think of methods as a hammer, right? The parentheses means I'm like swinging the hammer, and I'm like executing the method, right? Here, without the parentheses, you're like, you're looking, you're holding onto the hammer, you're not performing the operation. So what this is saying is, yes, you have successfully like grabbed this method, but I'm not calling it for you unless you put the parentheses. So oftentimes what beginners will do is they'll just forget to put the parentheses and they'll see something like this. They'll see like, or they'll see something that says like, build in method, right? Uh, all that means is you forgot to put the parentheses. So if you want to fix it, just put in the parentheses and you'll be good. All right. So what did we talk about? We just talked about, you know, pop takes the index. Uh, we talked about, you know, looking at documentation with that question mark, question mark. And we talked about paying attention to the return value, right? Append has none as a return value. Pop has that element that you are removing as the return value. Okay, for uh, questions before moving on to this last problem? No? All right. So for this one, you know, people were asking, like, okay, is this, the, is this how you want me to do it? Is this how you want me to do it? Like, the, really the way I want you to do it is, uh, like, just to 
think about how, how here's my general technique, and you'll hear me say this a lot with these questions. Okay, let's say maybe this is too, maybe there's just too many names here, right? So the problem is count the number of uh, repeated names. I believe that's the problem, right? So let's just maybe give ourselves a smaller example to start. Uh, even smaller. Okay. So let's say we have these three names and we'll give ourselves like one repeat. So basically I'm making the problem easier for myself and I'm making it so easy that I can solve it in my head. Meaning I can look at it and tell you the answer. So if the problem is like, tell me what is the number of repeated names? Uh, I can see Benita Royals is repeated, is the only repeated person, okay? So now the question is, I guess, well, how do I, how did my brain figure that out, okay? Or, or maybe another way of thinking it is, is you can also draw an analogy and be like, if these were playing cards and I had to remove the duplicates, how would I do something like that? Okay, you've probably all, we've probably all done that, you know. And then we take that procedure and we translate it into code. So there are different ways, you know, if this was the playing cards, probably what I would have done is maybe like, I don't know, what I really would do, I don't know if I want to show this one. Yeah, maybe we'll show this one. Uh, all right, we'll do this where you can sort it. I think this is what I would do if it was like playing cards. And now I can see this stuff, you know, the, these are the repeats right here, right? If, the, if, the, if one equals the next one, then it's repeated. Otherwise, I'm good, right? So that's one way of kind of doing it. Now we can go through each customer and, uh, and see if this one equals the next one. That might be a little hard to follow through. I, I can show you guys that solution. Let's do that solution last. Here's another kind of, but our first technique is sort the customers, or let's say, think about playing cards. Playing cards or no cards could be anything. So what would, what would we do? We would sort the customers and then go through each one and see if the current customer equals the next one. If it does, we know it's a repeat. Okay? Actually, I feel like we can probably do this now. So, again, I'm just going to repeat our approach like a hundred times. Our approach is, one, we made our problem easier. Like meta approach. Make the problem easier by giving an easier example. Okay? Then we said, what is the answer? Like with our, just looking at the problem, what is, what is the answer? The answer is this thing is repeated. Now, how do we probably do it? Or how might we do this with playing cards? All right, sort it. And now if this is equal to the next one, right? Uh, add it, maybe add it to a list. So, okay. And then we just write out these steps, and now we just have to translate it to code. So sort the customers, go through each customer, see if the current customer equals the next one. If it does, we know it's a repeat. Cool. Sort the customers, we did that. Go through each customer and see if the current customer equals the next one. So let's kind of translate this into pseudocode. For each customer, see if the current customer equals the new one, the next one. So we'll say, for customer, in customers, does the current customer equal the next one? Now this is gonna get hard, right? Because if I just print out the customer, you know, I don't know what the next one is. So this feels not great. So instead what we can do is, and I'll show other approaches uh, to this as well, but for now, let's just stick with this. The other thing we can do is we can say the, the length of the customers, there's four customers, and remember if we do this range function, we can say if there's zero up to four, right? But it's really, 
if you turn this into a list, you can see it's really, zero, it's really exclusive. It's zero up to three. This is similar to the question you all saw in the interview uh, to get into Jigsaw, right? So how do we do this? So now let's go through each number. Let's even call it an index in the list. Let's call this my sorted customers. And let's print the index. Okay. So what are we doing? We're sorting the customers. They should be in alphabetical order, and then we're going through each index. So how is this going to help us? It helps us because we can use the index to access each customer, right? So for each number in this range, 0 to 3, let's access the customer. Right, and now let's print this. So now we're just printing out each customer at the index. And let's go through sorted customers. That'll probably be better. Go through each sorted customer, Benita, Benita, Alicia, blah, blah. And now the next question is, this is going to be our current customer. And then what's our next customer? Our next customer is maybe the person at sorted index plus one. We probably will run into an error here, but we can fix it. Anyone, maybe we all can see it, see what the error will be, it's all right. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened. We go through the first customer, it's been, and maybe we can, even with print, you can do this. You can say the current customer, this might make it more clear. And we'll do uh, just so we don't have multiple print statements. I think this will make it more clear. Next customer. All right, next customer is the sort of the index plus one. All right, this will make it more clear. Okay, so what happened? The current customer is Benita Royals. Next customer is Benita Royals, right? Because this is at the current index and this is at the next index. Then we have current index is Benita Royals. Next customer is Alicia. So here we don't, there's not a duplicate. Here there is also not a duplicate. And then what happens? It tells us the list index is out of range and that's happening on this line. So why is the list index out of range? Because if we're going 0, 1, 2, 3, right, 0, 1, 2, 3, and now we go 3 plus 1, right, it's looking for an element at the fourth index, right, right, the fifth element, but there's only four elements. So we can just, instead of going to the length of the customers, let's go to the length of the customers minus 1. And now we can print this out. And now we can basically say, we kind of see the logic, right? If the current customer equals the next customer, I think we want the number of repeats. We can add one. So say the number of repeats equals zero. And then we say something like, if the current customer equals equals the next customer, why did that happen? Next customer, colon, let's do number of repeats equals the number of repeats plus one, something like that. So in this case, we have uh, one repeat. Right. And if we add more, we can test our code by adding more. Let's just test it. So we have Alicia, Benita, uh, customers, and we're doing it. We should get two here. Okay, so this is not, you know, like this is a tricky way of doing it, but what what is kind of the overall point? The overall point, because you guys are kind of asking, okay, what's the best approach? The real approach that I am looking for and that like I advocate for is kind of this, like, 
be able to answer the question without code. How many repeats are there? Two. Next step. Have your brain, you know, unpack what your brain did to answer the question. Okay? So if sorting it, unless I'm sorting it can make it easier, right? Then, then how do you know, right? Like, what is the next step that your brain is doing? Your brain is basically like looking to see, is this guy equal to, is this person equal to the next person? Is this person equal to the next one? Blah, 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 right? So then we can translate right down the logic. You can see that we wrote down essentially in pseudocode. And then finally, you know, after each line, you can you know, turn that line into code, right? So for each customer, see if the current customer equals the next one, so it's these lines. If it does, we know it's a repeat, so increment, okay? So this is one way. What is, this is not the way I was kind of intending when I looked at it, uh, when I initially gave this problem. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't an easier way to do this. You can take the list of customers, okay? You can, this is our original list. Let's say, uh, sorry about that, I don't know what happened there. Okay, here's our original customers. And now what? So we have this, how many elements are this? There are five, okay. If we get the set of customers, there are three. Okay, how many duplicates must there be? If there's three when we have the unique and there's five overall, right? I feel like there must be two. So you can do kind of like this, like the length of the set minus the length or the length of the originals minus the length of the set, right? Tells you that there's two repeats. So this is easier approach. This is the approach that kind of jumped out at me, but it requires being familiar with Python. This approach here, and there's plenty others, this approach here is more, okay, like how do I take a procedure that I, I kind of can go through in pseudocode feel confident it works, and then translate that into code. Let me see some questions. Do we care about, no, at this point, so the question is do we care about like uh, time complexity or just simplicity? Yeah, I would say what we care about is really following, following the logic, like following, you know, for these types of leak code problems, we'll, we will talk about time complexity in this course, but in terms of priorities, like what I generally say is make it make it right, meaning like get the right answer, or sorry, make it work, meaning like actually have it like produce the correct output. Make it right means readability. Okay, so if you see like things that you can clean up in terms of variable names or removing a couple lines, that's good. And then finally make it fast, okay? The other thing is, you know, I watch, you know, like, like seminars by you know people at Google and things like that, they all said they just like their first step is simply make it work. The reason why is because you're giving you're allowing you're kind of digesting the problem while you're solving it. Okay, like if you're giving this in an interview, you're becoming more familiar with the problem as you're going through it, and then your brain you know uh, can think of other solutions. Right, but you're becoming more familiar with the data and, and just uh, getting that down. Uh, okay, what if someone came three or more times? So this is like if we see the same name uh, multiple times. Yeah, I think this will still work, right? Can I answer a louder no from what my yeah, perspective yeah, yeah. Go was? Ahead. Uh, did you want to jump in? Oh, yeah. So basically what I was saying there 
is that if someone uh, came more than two times, then if you took the length of customers and subtracted that from length of set customers, you would have a higher difference than the number of unique people that have repeated itself. So someone has repeated themselves more, like they've come back more than twice. So you're going to end up having a higher difference because that's one person who's now come back four oh, times. Very maybe. cool. Yes. Okay. So that's that's a clever. I think, and I also think the correct reading of the question. Uh, so the point is, let's say we have Benita Royals three times. Yeah. Very nice. So I, the question, I don't know if I have it. Okay, here it is. Let's copy this and have a careful reading of this. This is awesome. So, okay, now we have a list of customers that our restaurant had in the past day. Find the number of customers that showed up more than once. If I do the set thing, right? Benita Royals is still just a customer that showed up more than once. So here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six elements, okay? If we do the set, there's only gonna, the length of the set is just one, two, three, four, right? The number of repeat customers, uh, let's actually just show it. Let's do it with code and make it easier. So original customers, the length is five. Five, one, two, let me declare this. Okay, six. All right. The original customers, the length is six. Now let's do the set. And let's make this a little easier to see. We just have one repeat customer, Benita. Okay? And she came, uh, she showed up three times. Okay, so there's five people. Now we'll do the set of the original and the length. Right? There's only three total like people that different individuals who showed up one, two, and three. Okay, uh, so if we do the difference, the diff five minus three is two because this person, uh, in this approach, their account they've you know they've showed up. I think we all see it. They've showed up three times. So we really just want to consider this one person who's repeating which is really interesting. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to rethink this whole, that, that problem. Uh, it feels harder to me, but it is a great catch. And one thing, like before we go, I think this is great because like one thing you can do to like verify, uh, we'll go through, like we have curriculum on how to answer these types of questions. And one of the first things it says in that curriculum is, like you do want to just repeat back essentially to your interviewer or to like the person giving you instructions what how your understanding of the question. And another way of doing that is okay, given this example, we'd expect the correct like would we expect the output to be 2? Given this example, would we expect the output to be 3? Right? And in this case, the interviewer would have like corrected us and basically said no, 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 because no, Benito only showed up is one you know, unique customer. So that's a great reading of the question. Uh, I'd have to let's let me think about it, and we'll see how. I think we, we can uh, I think we, uh, we solved it, but it's a lengthy process. Uh, uh, Willie, he solved it this way to uh, only get Benita one time. But dictionary, but there is another approach: is we can create two lists, and if the customer showed already, we can pop out that person from that list and count it and then it won't repeat it again. If you, oh, I see, I see. If you see the person, remove So for example, all lists. created two lists, repeated and non-repeated, and mm -hmm. then for loop for the customer. And then once it is in the repeated list, we can pop that name and put it the counter variable counted already one. So it won't show it again on that list. Got it, okay. All right, let's let's tackle that in the next class. I wanna, I will try to let you guys out at nine thirty. Um, cool. I mean, this one great, guys. Uh, we're gonna.